Okay, today we're going to continue our discussion of thermodynamics and we're going to talk about heat transfer in a closed system. And uh, recall that when heat is transferred to an object, its temperature rises according to this equation. And so uh, when we look at this equation, remember Q uh, stands for the heat. And this could be heat flowing to that object or away from that object. M stands for the mass of the object delta T for the temperature change here and this could be in either Kelvin or Celsius it's the same quantity and this guy here C is what we call the specific heat capacity and it, it takes on a different value for each uh, substance that we're talking about so there's a different specific heat capacity for for gold or platinum or whatever metal uh, water or any substance that you can think of uh, air anything like that they're going to have their own specific heat capacities and in this class we're going to treat C as a constant and so when we say a closed system what do we mean well that's what we first have to talk about if we're going to talk about heat transfer in a closed system and so when we envision a closed system think about this box here and this box represents your system everything inside the box is your system everything that's not inside the box is the surrounding so everything that is not uh, entailed in your system is the surroundings so that if you were to sum up the system plus the surroundings you'd have the whole universe you'd have everything in in uh, in the whole universe accounted for in your kind of labeling system here and so the, basically when we say a closed system what we're talking about is that the heat does not exchange between the system and the surroundings and so uh, whatever kind of heat transfer that's going on around in the system it only flows kind of to other objects in that system same thing with the surroundings we're assuming that no heat escapes from the system to the surroundings so that does not happen nor does heat go in from the surroundings to the system so this does not happen as well and uh, another way to say this is an isolated system and so let's look at a case here where in inside of our closed system we had 50 grams of aluminum at 100 degrees Celsius and we also have 50 grams of gold at 25 degrees Celsius so here we have two different metals with two uh, distinct specific heat capacities but they have the same masses in this case but they have different temperatures and so these objects here in this closed system are going to be able to transfer heat with each other but not with anything else and so uh, what we're going to uh, imagine here is that the heat is going to flow from the aluminum to the gold until these two objects reach the same temperature and that's a condition called thermal equilibrium so we can imagine here the heat flowing from the aluminum to the gold because it flows from the hot object to the cold object until the two objects reach the same temperature and I've put in these red squiggly lines here to show show that happening okay and so in this, this first example on this video first of two examples I want to talk about and show you that we can calculate the temperature that these two objects will will meet at so to speak so we're gonna we're gonna start with the aluminum and get cooler and the gold is gonna get warmer and we're gonna achieve the same temperature what temperature is that going to be so first let's just take as a given this information that we have here 50 grams of gold 50 grams of, of uh, aluminum and the main uh, thing that I want you to take away as far as a big picture idea is that if you have a closed system then Q1 plus Q2 is equal to zero what we're saying is that no heat is unaccounted for here if I take uh, and take into account the amount of heat that's gained by object um, uh, one that's going to be the same amount of heat that was lost by object two so that if I sum up Q1 plus Q2 I'm going to get zero Another way to state this, of course, is that Q1 is equal to minus Q2. All right. And so in our case, we're going to go back and remember that Q is equal to MC delta T. And so what we'll have is we'll have Q of the aluminum, which is we'll say is object number one, is equal to minus Q for the gold which is object number two 
and each of those uh, Q's will be replaced by M C delta T. All right. So what we're going to put in here is the mass of the aluminum, which was 50 grams, okay, times the specific heat capacity of aluminum, which is 0 0.900 joules per gram degrees Celsius times the temperature change. Now here's what we don't know. We don't know the temperature change, but we do know this object is going to reach a final temperature. We'll call that temperature TF. So the delta T is equal to TF minus TI. So this is TF minus 100 degrees Celsius. And this is going to equal minus the Q for gold. Well, minus 50.0 grams times 0 0.129 joules per gram degree Celsius. And over here, uh, we're going to have TF minus 25. And so what we're saying here in our equation is that these two objects are going to meet at the same temperature, and that's true. All right, so here, here's our algebra equation. Now, now it's just a math problem, and we're going to go ahead and try to solve this as best we can. And we'll notice right away that a, a number of things work out to our favor. Number one, the mass of these two objects is the same. And so we can just divide out that factor of 50 grams right there. And so what we're saying here is that the mass of the block has nothing to do with this problem as long as the two blocks have the same mass. And also we can cancel a factor of joules with joules and grams degrees Celsius with grams degrees Celsius over here. And so just simply restating what we have over here, we have 0 0.900 um, times the quantity of TF minus 100 degrees C is equal to minus 0 0.129 times the quantity of TF minus 25 degrees C. Okay. Now when you're doing these problems, just remember to be neat and copy everything line by line. A lot of people, a lot of students will forget that minus sign up there and, and, uh, and that will cause their answer to be uh, wrong, of course. So the next thing here that we can do is we can div divide each side here by this factor of 0 0.129 and when we do that we get uh, 6.9767 um, TF and I'm showing here every little step if you can do it in less that's great and um, is equal to minus TF minus 25 degrees Celsius and here we have six point I should mention here that we have three sig figs in this answer, so we'll underline that factor. So 6.9767TF minus 697.67 degrees Celsius is equal to minus TF plus 25 degrees Celsius, distributing the minus sign through that parenthesis and now we simply have to collect like terms so we'll move this factor of TF which is 1 TF we'll move it to the other side and we'll get uh, 7.9767 TF and then we'll also move the uh, 697 to the other side adding it to to each side and uh, when we do that we'll get 722 722.67 degrees C and of course we'll find that TF is equal to 90.6 once we round to 3 sig fix and this is our final answer tells us our final temperature that the two blocks are going to meet uh, in the middle. And so just to summarize kind of what we found out in this in this example, 
now that we know the final temperature, we can go back and we can find, okay, let's find the amount of heat that was lost by the aluminum and just show that it equals the minus of the Q for gold. And so here we have the, the temperature of the aluminum. Well, it went down uh, by 9.4 degrees C. And the temperature of the gold, well, the temperature of the gold went up okay, by 65.6 degrees C. And so you might wonder, well, why was the gold more affected by this heat transfer than the aluminum? So the aluminum stayed much closer to its original temperature. And that, of course, is that the uh, specific heat capacity of aluminum was 0 0.900 joules per gram degree Celsius, whereas that uh, for the gold was 0 0.129 joules per gram degree Celsius. And so, you know, recall that we have here the aluminum block and it's and it's hot and we have heat transfer between the aluminum and the gold and so we have heat flowing in this direction but every time the aluminum well, were to cool off by one degree C okay it would transfer 0.9 joules of heat uh, to the gold and that would cause the uh, gold to shoot up not one degree but several degrees because the specific heat capacity now here is different by a factor of about eight or so. So uh, the, the aluminum here maintains its original temperature much, much more faithfully. And now what we can do, as I said, is we can find uh, Q for the aluminum as equal to 0 0.900 joules per gram degrees Celsius times the temperature change for the aluminum, which the aluminum's temperature change was minus 9.4 degrees C, minus sign because the temperature is going down, uh, times the mass of the block here, 50.0 grams. Okay, and what we find is that when we work this math out, that the uh, heat transfer was minus 423 joules. And now when we calculate Q for the gold, what we find when we just plug in all the same values, of course, and just give me a second to do this here. We see that this value here is plus 423 joules. And so, again, the same amount of heat that was lost by the aluminum was gained by the gold because it's a closed system. The heat doesn't leak out and extra heat does not, does not uh, seep in. Let's go on to our uh, second example. And, and in this case, we're told that we have a 45 gram piece of metal that has an initial temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So, you know, draw yourself a little picture here if you want to. And it's added to a water bath Okay, here we'll do blue for water. How cool is that? And uh, we're going to uh, transfer this into the water bath containing 152 uh, grams of water, and the water is at room temperature. So the water is here, sitting here at 25 uh, degrees C. And it says, after thermal equilibrium is achieved, it is observed that the water has a final temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. So the water here evidently has increased from 25 to 27.0, so 25.0 to 27.0, and what we find is that that is a temperature change of plus 2.0 degrees C. So this is here is going to equal delta T for the water, right? Well, it doesn't say this explicitly, but it's implied that the, of course, that the metal would have the same final temperature. So the metal here has gone from 100 but it's also going down and reaching thermal equilibrium at 73, uh, excuse me, at 27 degrees Celsius. And so its temperature change here uh, was um, minus 73 degrees Celsius. And so once again, we see the, the substance with the 
higher specific heat capacity and well, in this case higher mass too was able to maintain much closer to its original temperature and what we're asked to find is the specific heat capacity of this metal okay and so in order to set this problem up the way that we want to we have to recognize that Q for the metal is going to equal minus the Q for the water and all we need to use is uh, Q equals MC delta T uh, twice but again remember this only works because we have a closed system if the system's not closed you can't say anything like that okay so the Q of the metal equals C for the metal which is the variable that we're solving for times the mass of the metal which is 45.0 grams times the temperature change for the metal which is minus 73 zero gram, uh, Celsius here and again it's minus because it's um, losing heat it's cooling off and we get here a minus 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius I didn't leave myself enough room here did I and then we have down here 152 grams and then this is plus 2.0 degrees Celsius and so we have enough information on the right hand side to summarize this whole side over here as minus 1271.936 joules and how many sig figs do we have? Of course we have two so we're going to underline that too and over here on the right hand side we say that this side uh, simplifies to um, minus three two eight five cm uh, here's the variable and then we still have those factors of grams degrees celsius and then when we solve for cm we find that cm is equal to and here notice that the minus signs cancel out uh, and so that's an important feature here. Uh, we get 0 0.387 uh, so that's 39 joules per gram degrees Celsius and that is our final result. And so this is typical of metals kind of in that range where we anticipate it to be um, much less than the specific heat capacity of water, of course. All right, well, let's just do a quick summary of what we talked about today. We defined two terms, very important for you in your study of uh, thermodynamics, which is a closed system and thermal equilibrium. And we did two quick examples showing how heat is transferred in a closed system. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day.